Hey, okay. Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitch International with me, Darius Olenchowskas. Today is the 6th of July, 2023. So, yep, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such. This material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. Look, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest. I'll disappear from that little left corner in there. And uh, yeah, we can go from there. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, just a quick mentioning of our Easy Markets website, which you can always uh, check out for more information about us, guys. You can find some useful stuff here as well. So just uh, just browse our website, check it out, and you know, and like I said, you'll you'll find some good material. Now then, uh, jumping into the charts, uh, the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei two two five, and you can see. Uh, a few adjustments have to be made. Now, first of all, we drifted back below this downside line, which we broke, and uh, we fell below that 32,923 territory, which I've mentioned before as well. I said too that if we do fall below it, I'll consider a bit of a move to the downside. Um, look, this downside line has to go. Maybe we could draw it now this way. And again, previously, that downside line was also a bit of a tentative one. So you know, um, we kind of adjust as we go here. Um, at this point, yes, uh, there is a possibility for a further uh, decline here, um, or should I say a correction uh, lower. But the problem I have here is a bunch with a bunch of um, with a bunch of trend lines here, which in a way are all tentative, but. Um, Still, maybe some of them could provide some sort of uh, resistance or support. And in this case, we have this um, this short-term upside support line, which is drawn from the low the 8th of June. But look, it's, uh, it's just a, a tentative one. So, you know, maybe it's not going to carry much significance. So in a way, I think that in order not to complicate our lives, I think let's stick to something uh, a little bit more simple. And uh, for me, the simple approach will be that if as long as we stay somewhere below that, um, well, in general, that 33,000 mark, then yes, uh, in a way, mm, uh, in a way, further declines in the short run could be possible. And look, the decline that came in uh, today, I think that it was mainly driven by the FOMC meeting minutes that came out yesterday. Um, so if you were following that, so look, nothing new but the fact that uh just uh okay they're all saying that i'm talking about the fomc um policy makers or they're all saying that they want you know full in, full inflation oh sorry full inflation full full employment lower inflation and you know they're doing everything what they can but to be honest look uh they have to still choose something and at, the, at this point inflation is kind of the more important one and uh the the target of two percent uh is the more important target right now uh, because um because um just bear with me one moment um so yeah um just a second sorry <laughs> somebody tried to come in and here into my in my into my studio but um okay um Look, uh, for now, um, I would say this way, that um, the way we're going to play this game is that uh, we, we, will, we will consider the fact that the main goal, or at least I will consider the fact that the main goal right now is to kind of work on inflation. I'm talking about the FOMC. And um, their goal is to, yes, to lower down inflation. But, some you know, in general, when you're trying to lower down inflation, you're Try, you're in, increasing interest rates, right? And this is what they said as well, that they're sticking to the idea of, of raising rates. 
So, um, so at, at this point, I mean, raising rates, I mean, will will affect the uh, will will affect companies, right? And this is going to become more expensive for companies to lend uh, or to borrow uh, the other way around, um, and uh, that might uh, straight away put a pressure on personnel. Because again, when, when what we know is that the whenever you know the hard times hit, the company decides to lay off people. That's the first thing. So and basically, it's like without saying that you know you're aiming for full employment or something like that, but actually you're kind of not. You're you're you need inflation to come down, and you understand the consequences. You know that interest rates can have a higher interest rates can have. So. You're accepting that fact, and uh, you know, but you're saying one thing, but actually, you know that the other thing could happen. But anyway, um, look for now. I would say this way: looking at the technical picture on Nikkei two two five, we fell below the thirty two thousand nine hundred twenty three territory, and uh, um, we kind of stayed uh, below it. So in a way, I'm kind of going to be leaning more towards the downside, and I'm going to exclude that upside support line that I've drawn right now. So I'm just going to aim for the 32,310 zone as long as, like I said, as long as we stay below the 33,000 mark. And then maybe I'll aim for that 50-day uh, EMA. SX200, another uh, similar story. Uh, look, we had a strong decline here. And also mm, the fact that um, the fact that in general metals have been declining in commodities, commodity prices have been a little bit on the, on the decline. Uh, um we saw that yes uh, some companies in, in australia and, and we know that the big companies in australia uh they do uh, they are commodity driven uh companies so uh, commodity price driven companies so you know higher the commodity price the better the company is doing um and uh yes uh, some reports started coming in that you know companies like uh bhp billiton and um, some other big giants in um in australia yes they're kind of not doing very well of that but in general the everything's getting more expensive for them prices of price of some metals have been declining or let's say they were stable and that's hurting the profitability and uh yes so and of course um the whole in general the whole kind of uh uh, how to say it an uncertainty around what's going to happen because we are kind of sitting at let's say highs already so uh, yeah what's going to happen further that's also putting that little pressure on on the whole um, picture and uh, looking at the technical picture of ASX 200 you can see that yes also the whole point with the FOMC that um, that played in weighed in um, and uh, yes we, we saw a nice decline here uh, on this index but look how well my target played out so i talked about this 7121.25 territory i look i talked about this idea as well i said that if we do fall below all of the emas i will start looking at some lower levels um then i'll aim for the mm, then i'll aim for this territory and if that gets cleared then yes uh further declines are possible so um long story short um for now i am leaning towards the downside towards further downside and uh initially i'll target the 7064 territory but then of course the 7009 or maybe actually the psychological 7000 territory so let's see how that's going to play out um so the s p 500 jumping into a few uh u.s indices um so today is a good day for economic data in the u.s We'll get the uh, ADP numbers, the ISM non-manufacturing numbers, because on Monday we had the manufacturing numbers, which, which disappointed. And let's see how the numbers come out um, today. Mm. Oh, by the way, let me just put something into the chat. Good morning to everyone. To everyone. I'll just start off, kick off the chat there. Um, yeah, so let's see. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so... Now then, um, so the, like I said, the situation here with the indices, and yes, of course, with the U.S. indices, yes, yesterday the reaction we got here was a decline, of course, yes, because um, they were, um, market got a little bit spooked because, hey, 
um, you know, interest rates uh, will go higher and uh, this is not going to be good for the business, for the businesses. And uh, yes, that's why we saw the index declining. However, look, I talked about this already and uh, in, in the beginning of this month, and I said that um, the market is already uh the market is already adjusting to the fact that um we will get a, a rate hike during the july meeting here there we go it's we have already like the 88.7 percent for the 25 basis point increase so so that's kind of uh pushing the uh yes everybody's like we're, whenever we have these headlines or or you know no news these these news that are you know talking about that stuff yes we get a negative reaction and you know we saw everybody's like oh you know tragic and blah 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 but actually everybody knows that this is going to happen and everybody's already adjusting to it so i think that Mm, we might still see maybe some more upside at some point but look i'm just at this point i'm just going to go purely from the technical side um and um at the moment um here what i'm looking at is i need to see a push above this territory right here uh, above the um let's say the uh, the highest point of june um or should i say the highest point of june is here but still yeah the highest point of june i need to see a clearance of that in order to go higher um this way yes a forthcoming higher high will be confirmed then potentially more buyers could join in on the downside i need to see a break of this upside line drawn from the low of the 24th of may and then yes we could consider maybe a larger correction to the downside uh daredevil dave good morning good morning to you too good morning to everybody else as well who's joining in um look yesterday by the way before i forget yesterday there was a comment under the video under my uh yesterday's video that mm, from j jd invest uh, one um so one of the viewers here asked about the different pricing that i have here look the re i'm looking at the I, I don't know i already mentioned this before but the reason why i have different pricing is because i'm looking at the futures and uh I have the cash index as well. You, uh, JD Invest One. Uh, I think that um, because you're looking at the cash index, that's why we have a difference. So you know, uh, and again, look, sometimes the pricing is off. The, 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 some different brokers uh, sometimes have a, a slightly different pricing, but because, uh, but again, again, sometimes. Um, not always, but um, at this point, look, we have the cash index and we have the the futures. I am looking at the cash index uh, occasionally, but look, the analysis does not change. Still, if you look at the cash index here, you can see that we are also near kind of key uh, resistance, this uh, highest point of June right here. So we still need to see a clearance of that. And also we need to see a push above this um or should i say if we continue to trade above this upside line then yes uh a push above the this barrier okay here it's 4465 on the futures it's roughly 4498 right there this one i'm talking about not this line but this one the highest point of june and uh okay yes there is a difference in the price but the outlook is the same so in a way i always stick to the Mm, I always stick to the um, kind of idea and uh, rule that don't really focus too much on the exact level or exact number. I'm not like telling you that, you know, actually here at 4,450, 4, you go long. No, no, you need to keep an eye in the area because again, mm, I'm giving you like roughly an idea of what could happen potentially if something let's say gets broken or you know or because um this way kind of the uh, uh, it increases the chances for let's say um a continuation move in the direction of the breakout uh that's according to all ta rule ta rules so that's normal so it doesn't matter what you're gonna look at if let's say okay you know it doesn't matter if this is five thousand or ten thousand but the formation is still the same like in here for example right it really really doesn't matter which um like i said if you um you just look at the scenario potential scenario here so um, you look at the formations and uh you know apply still they're gonna move the cash and the uh, and the um the futures are gonna move in this in a similar direction well in the same direction so um just kind of like i said doesn't matter what the number here sits at 
it's um it's more of the area that i'm looking at i'm looking at previous highs previous lows I'm basically i'm applying dow theory so um that's the reason i in my opinion like i said if jd and in invest one if you're watching um like i said that's um, the reason why i just really don't focus on the like specific level maybe i look at the okay look don't get me wrong i look at the level but i I look at the area around that level so for me maybe to mention that look 4598 or 4500 is an important area to watch but uh actually it's more of a a barrier that i'm looking at of, of a break in order to con to get a little bit more comfortable with the upside um so that's the reason why like i said for example dow um here we have a, a similar situation and we have this dow here that's the futures and this is the cash index and in a way um okay i have by the way just to let you know i have less data here on my cash index so that's why in a way another point why i look to i like to look at futures is just because uh we have i have more data here on my chart so more history data and uh the cash index look it's good for uh day trading um so you can utilize that we the, you know we, we have lower spreads on that so just um you can consider um downs but in general in a way you could look at the futures you can analyze the futures but actually you could make trades on on the cash so it's it's all kind of okay uh we're like i said again just as long as you you know you manage your risk correctly you have your stop loss in place and all will be good so come jumping back into dow here on the futures um look i have the situation here we're declining we're we have approached this upside support line drawn from the low the first of june so um i think a few adjustments have to be made here as well uh this hurdle no longer needed and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to keep an eye on the highest point of june 30th now on my chart it's at 34,706. but on your chart it's maybe something else so just kind of keep that in mind and um uh, like I said, this is where I'm going to, from where I'm going to aim to the upside again. I'm going to, like I said, keep an eye on that in June 30th high. Uh, if we clear that one, my next target here is the, um, is the highest point of, um, of June right here, uh, which is on my chart here on the futures is around 34,889 on the cash index. Um, it will be roughly around here, the 34,620, but, um, look again, that's you can see the you can see the logic here right i mean if we do push above this territory this high i mean my next target is this high and then if that gets clear then yes i will go further north um but the thing is that if we do clear the upside line now that's where i'm gonna get a bit more uh interested about uh revisiting the 50-day ema uh, nasdaq 100 as well uh, quite an interesting one. Oh, there we go we froze a little bit um i think yeah my chart froze ah, a good pause to have it uh, to have some tea mm, i'll wait until it all un I'll, I'll, until it will unfreeze so are we doing anything okay um there we go we unfroze. Um, fantastic. Uh, so, um, looking at the picture here, look, I said to you before that if we do break this downside line and we stay above it, we may at some point revisit it, retest it from the other side. And we did that. We rebound and pushed back up. But what I said to you, I'm aiming for the highest point of June right here, which is at uh, 15,475 here on my chart um, on the cash index it is roughly around this 15,300 zone. So you could keep an eye on that one. But in general, if you're looking for some higher levels, guys, at this point, I think the given the um, the weird, not weird, but let's say not perfect, picture perfect um, approach of this uh, highest point of June, um i'm gonna wait this one out i'm gonna just observe the price action if we do pop above this territory right there the highest point of june then yes i'll go further north um and then we will yeah uh we will take it from there uh for the downside i will start looking at some lower levels if first of all um i will try to draw this and we'll see if this is going to work or not 
okay uh maybe not picture perfect but still okay ish um for now i would say this way that um if we are looking for some lower levels then uh a drop well hmm, okay sorry I'm, I'm stopping myself because as i speak i keep on seeing these ideas and I'm, i want to see if this is going to work out or not so look previously i would say that the fifteen thousand mark here on the futures um is something that i'm going to be keeping close eye on but i think i will start already with my downside from around here it's 15,224. If that gets cleared, I will consider a larger correction here to the downside towards my upside support line taken from the low of the 13th of March. For the cash index, um, it would roughly be somewhere around here near the 15,057 mark. So just kind of like apply, you know, that uh, you see the formation here, you see the logic what I'm doing here. So, uh, but still, don't get me wrong, uh, we do have this upside line, which um, you see here, it's uh, like this could be drawn like this, but either way, uh, as you can see, the, um, the upside line, this upside line is actually near um the 50-day ema so potentially good target but some clearance is needed um, and like i said do not exclude the upside scenario as well because we do have a bunch of data coming out from the us the german index dax there we go we are continuing to slide and we fell so let's go slowly um we fell below the 16,150 territory uh on my futures here uh then we traveled towards the um the 50-day ema this is what i was targeting and uh then we cleared it so in a way i was saying to you that if we do fall below this territory because initially i was hoping maybe to see a, a rebound from it uh, but i said that if we do fall below it then yes my next target is the 50-day ema tick uh, then um if that gets cleared my next target is the uh 15,834 here on my futures which is marked by the low of the 26th of june so basically the, my target is the low of the 26th of june um from here i will take it uh, i'll take it carefully because look um maybe we'll continue to slide maybe we'll test the 100 day ema and to be honest if we test the 100 day ema we might as well test this upside line uh taken from the low of the 20th of december of last year now i'm not saying that this is a very important line in general look i said to you before that uh, me and my uh <laughs> love to for uh veggies um yeah sometimes can blur my mind so that's why i've drawn this one but i'm not talking about it because again i want to see if that's going to actually carry any weight or not so at this point i would say that um i'm leaning towards the downside as long as we stay above the 50-day ema my next target then is this lowest point of june 26th and then below that is the 100 day EM ema here and then i'll ta target this upside line as well uh us dollar index guys so 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 okay we broke my upper side of the triangle but then we started drifting back to the downside look mm, yes we're falling back down but um we're it's an early start here in europe and uh we are declining on this one but we're kind of declining and we're currently just sitting bang on in that line. Um, look, maybe this line is not drawn this way. Maybe it should be this way or maybe it's actually this way. So it's that's why I'm saying when I'm drawing these lines, I'm saying that there are some, some of them are very tentative. Because again, depending on how you're going to connect the tops, maybe it's going to be a little bit below. Maybe it's going to be a little bit above. In these scenarios, what I do is I look at my other uh, help and my other uh, supporting indicators like for example the emas and you can see that we are declining but we are resting above the 108 ema so this if we continue to trade above it then this i mean this kind of gives me an idea that actually maybe you know the bulls are not willing to give up here and maybe we'll see a nice good push back to the upside here Mm, look, I'm not excluding also a false breakout of some sort here, maybe to a test of the 50-day EMA. And if that gets done, then yes, a pushback up here could be uh, possible. So uh, if you're not comfortable with the upside on that, in that sense, then what you can do here is, and this is, let me recycle some of these lines. What you can do here is keep your eyes on this little territory right there, the 103 
uh, 0.11 or actually maybe somewhere in between these levels so the hundred and third uh, 103.15 so yeah um, look if we want to uh, go higher I would say probably the safer option is to wait for a breakout above this territory however I get it the temptation is way too high and everybody's like you know uh, want to mm, go uh, like maybe take the the perfect trade look there's nothing like a perfect trade to be honest I mean there's always going to be your when you're even when you're going to take a perfect trade you're going to think ah, you know what what if I would wait a little bit more and you know a couple of days maybe more and like I would get a bigger profit and stuff so that's what I'm saying you're, you're human nature we're never satisfied that's why you need to kind of learn how to um appreciate what you can get let's say if you can squeeze one euro one dollar one yen one you know yuan one um something whatever frank um uh, honestly enjoy it because you're if you can do that constantly that's really great because look uh the get rich scheme um i would say that's um yeah, that's something that um, goes into your head and kind of um, plays against you. So that's why be careful in that sense. Um, you are your own enemy and uh, not the broker, not the market. No, you, because you make the decision and uh, you make you make the entry, you know, and you go, you think that it's going to go there. And look, I always say, like I said, um, enjoy. Um, yes, it's good sometimes to go for the big kill, but um, if you see that it's not going, and this is what I've mentioned before in the past where I said that, look, when I target areas or let's say levels, I target the area. I don't target the exact level. And that level is just an orientation, orienteer for me, like where to go. And for example, in this case, let's say if we do pop above this 103.15 territory, somewhere above this territory, uh, my next target is the 200-day uh, EMA. And what could happen? We could travel higher. We could actually come very, very close to testing it and then reverse back down. So this is the frustration that somebody, you know, uh, some people get that oh you know i was so right and then it goes the back down takes you out and then reverses sharply and moves even higher so this is you know this is like ah oh, i knew it oh, i knew it you know so that's the enemy so uh that's your enemy basically so yeah look coming back to this picture here um i'm the moment i'm you can see as we speak we're resting on that 100 day ema if we continue to trade above it then yes i will still stick to the upside but i'll get more comfortable with higher levels if we do push above this 103.15 level if we do start falling back below the 50 day ema right here shown as the red line and stay below it i'm going to consider a bit of a uh, move to the downside jumping into gold uh there we go so yesterday what a tease it was looking at look at this so i've redrawn this uh downside line yesterday and uh look i said to you that um i think that but it like i had initially something like this but that doesn't really work and uh okay maybe some of you might say but hey what the there's what about this now maybe it's rebounding back up okay maybe it is but the thing is because all of these lines are so tentative you cannot really rely on just one so at this point look i would say this way that uh we traveled higher we broke this downside line the flatter one and then and then we uh, drifted back down we drifted yes to the downside and we some would say hey but we found good support around here okay uh could be the case but um at this point look you, if you want to uh you know do this on your chart okay Fair enough whatever you think it's comfortable you were comfortable with um but just be be careful so at this point look what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna keep an eye on this downside line the middle one so if you think that it's confusing enough well you know uh yeah i'm gonna keep an eye on the middle one and if we clear that one then yes i'll once again start aiming to the upside but i will target this 1933 territory initially but if that gets clear then yes my next target is the flatter uh downside line uh drawn from the high of the 2nd of june um this line uh, the flatter one uh, re coincides per perfectly with the 50-day ema and yes uh, you know then I'll, I'll take it from there this is where i'm gonna aim for initially if that if all this is gonna get cleared look uh if all these uh downside lines are gonna get cleared it's um 
yes, it's going to create positivity, uh, but probably more of positivity would come because of the fact that we are above all of the EMAs on our uh, you know, on our daily chart here and uh, potentially more buyers could join in. So something like this could be possible. So let's see. Uh, let's see. And of course, the gold bugs are uh, hoping for this scenario. But if we start falling back below the 1910 territory or even this uh, 200 day EMA and we stay below it, guys, well, that's where, you know, uh, I think the bears will get a little bit more excited. Uh, silver. Silver is also stuck here still. Yes, we're pushing higher. And look, I talked about this and I said to you that if we do pop above this 200 day EMA, I will consider a move higher, but only up until here, up until this downside line and uh, towards these two EMAs, the 50 and the 100, which uh, we seem to be approaching uh, carefully. So um, long story short, if you're looking for some higher levels, then yes, you could still aim for the upside. However, be careful here near this territory. If that gets cleared, yes, I will get more excited with the upside. But I'm not excluding the scenario that I've drawn here where we could see, you know, a drift uh, to the downside here uh, if this territory provides good resistance. Now, jumping into oil. Okay, so oil cuts, um, production cuts, sorry. Uh, so yeah, they're, uh, hoping to, mm, cut production. Um, well, they're, I think that with the OPEC meetings are, uh, yeah, were held yesterday and I think today as well, or maybe I'm missing something. Um, uh, but it doesn't matter. Honestly, at this point, I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on what's happening here right now. So basically yesterday, I think that they've agreed to, uh, production cut of uh, uh, Saudi Arabia agreed on the production to extend uh, a uh, a July production cut of one million barrels per day. So uh, and this is giving that little boost here for uh, oil, and we're seeing a nice push to the upside. Now the question is how we're gonna go further. Um, at the moment, I would say the technical picture is working out nicely. We are breaking my downside line, the one that I talked about. I said to you that if we clear it, I'll get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels. But then I, I said I'm also keeping an eye on this flatter downside line drawn from the high of the 24th of May. And um, at the moment, I would say this way that um, everything's pointing a little bit more towards the upside rather than the downside However, I'm still keeping an element of the doubt everywhere in, in, in everything. Um, and uh, yes, if we suddenly start falling back down, back below the 50-day EMA, I will maybe start leaning towards the downside. Look, in general, I said to you previously that maybe we have ourselves a nice mm, descending triangle pattern here forming with the nice lower side being here near the 67 territory. But... We're currently clearing the upper side, and uh, if we stay above it, then yes, I will consider maybe I will ignore the the, the descending triangle pattern. And I said it before to you yesterday, and uh, even before in my previous videos. Look, descending triangles, yes, are tend to be a bearish indication because um, um, we. But again, it, it tends to be a bearish indication, but um, the breakout is still needed because if it breaks to the upside and it's no longer valid. Um, the same story was with the ascending triangles. And uh, here you can see that we're currently violating the upper side of the descending triangle. So yeah, um, in a way, I would say that um, we could see some more upside, especially the fact that we, if we go from the EMA perspective, then we're pushing above the 50-day EMA. And uh, yeah, uh, maybe we could see some, um, some moves here to the upside towards the 100-day EMA. But again, Let's wait and see. Bitcoin, uh, annoying, not much to talk about here. Look, I, mean, I think the same analysis is valid. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I still need to see a push above this 31,000 territory. I would like to see the crypto staying above it and, and kind of the daily, the body of the daily candle staying above it in order to go higher. But I think that now that not only the 31,000 mark is the, uh, the barrier, but the 31,000 500 something like that just for that extra confirmation uh btc uh, bch usd bitcoin cash look at this animal honestly this is just this is what you want to be in um i mean i've missed it i but the thing is that i talked about this previously and i talked about 
Mm, let me just go back in time a little bit. I talked about previously about this, and I said to you that look, we have we're trading below the downside line, uh, taken from the high of the 21st of February. If that gets broken, I'm gonna aim higher, but I'm gonna aim only for the um <laughs> for the 200 day EMA. Um, uh, maybe if I get lucky towards this 154 territory. Well, I mean, talk about a move. Uh, talk about a move. Um, yeah um it cleared that it just went double that and just yeah it, it went all the way higher so but look at this as well what I'd, i mentioned to you yesterday that i said to look at keep an eye on this 268 territory how well did that play out um yes we had a false breakout uh, we had a breakout but it was a false breakout and we stayed above it and now we're pushing look we're again rebounding from this hurdle and pushing strongly to the upside i mean this is spectacular um now in terms of the upside scenario i would say this way that i'm gonna aim for the upside only like this so if we do push above the 300 zone, uh, my next target is the uh, the highest point of June. That's that's my target. That's going to be my aim around the 328. If we clear that, okay, I will go uh, further north. But if not, then uh, yes, um, then um, if we we might see maybe a double top or something like that. But again, let's wait and see. So that's why I'm going to go slowly on this um, in general, you know, because again. This is not moving. Uh, this is moving. Um, I don't know who's going to out, out pull who, but um, yeah, at this point, that's why I'm taking this uh, careful, cautious approach. AUD, USD, uh, jumping into a few pairs. So this one's a little bit of a mess um, because we're stuck. Actually, we're stuck roughly between these territories, the 0 0.6640 and the 0 0.6694 territory right here. So we're stuck in between these two levels. And uh, yeah, if we do want to go higher, I would say a push above this zone is required. Maybe that 0 0.67 territory actually could come in nicely because at the same time we would be placed above the 50 and the 100 day EMA and then we could target the 200 day EMA. For the downside, 0 0.6640 is something that I'm keeping a close eye on. I'm keep keeping an eye on the area here. If we do drop and stay below it, then yes, I will consider maybe a bit of a, a move lower here initially towards the low of the, is this the lowest? No, not the lowest point of June, the low of, of the 29th of June uh, near the 0 0.6595 uh, area. But if that gets cleared, a forthcoming lower low will be confirmed. AUD JPY. So yes, um, we had a decline, a beautiful move lower. And uh, yes, the reason why we had a decline is because the, uh, the indices declined too. And uh, when the indices get, when the market participants get spooked and they don't, they start, they stop jumping into indices, they jump into yen. Uh, because the yen becomes attractive, the yen is considered to be as a safe haven. So, um, yes, you can see that the result we had here. And uh, yeah, we uh, yesterday I've marked a new level here, the 96.83. Um, this is going to be what this is something that I'm going to be aiming for. Um, if I want to go higher, I need to see a push above this barrier. At the moment, I'm considering this scenario, so which is working out, seems to be working out so far. Let's, of course, uh, still a long way to go because what I said to you before that look, we had a falling veg, we broke it to the upside, that's all fine, then we started correcting back down, and then we considered this as a separate downside line. And uh, so this actually can go away. And now we can see that um, we we could retest this from the other side. And if we do that, maybe a rebound back up here could be possible. So just consider that. But if you're not comfortable with this scenario, then yes, uh, this 96.83 territory is something to keep in mind. AUD, NZD. So perfectly, perfect, perfect, perfect. Honestly, mission accomplished on this one. I was targeting this 1.0765, 7071 zone, somewhere around here. And yes, I got what I wanted. And that's uh, enough for me for now. Now I'm going to be watching uh, this territory. Let me just grab the highlighter. Um, I'm going to be watching this zone right here. If we continue to trade above it, then yes, maybe a bit of a rebound here could be uh possible so however i think that in my opinion the safer option is probably for the upside is to wait maybe for a push back above this uh, 1.0829 territory right here 
um because at the same time depending of course how we're going to trade maybe maybe all of these uh three emas they will turn here maybe they will approach this territory and you know and another thing here as well uh maybe this uh downside line here will work out nicely as well so we'll we, if we say if we get a break of it um more buyers could join in and stuff like that so Mm, that, this whole area right here is just going to be a neutral one for me. I'm just going to observe the price action and not really do much. But if we start, uh, can we continue to slide and we fall below the 1.0765 territory right here and stay below it. My next target is this one right here around the near the 1.0707 zone. And then we will go from there. <clears throat> um, USD JPY. Beautiful. A uh, beautiful move. Um, this is what I was talking about. I said to you that if you want to go higher, you need to wait for a pop above this zone somewhere. This 145.11 or in general, this 145 territory. And like I said, I said to you yesterday that, uh, you know, the Bank of uh, Japan uh, needs kind of is keeping an eye on that 145 level. And uh, yeah, they um, I think that they intervene a little bit, maybe, but okay look i think everything is connected everything is you know somehow coincidences the these, these coincidences happen and you know suddenly the fomc comes out very aggressive you know or should i say the statement comes out very aggressive and now we're seeing this push to the downside um look in general i would say that it's good for the dollar right i mean you would say that it's good for the dollar because hey uh higher rates are good uh whenever, whenever interest rates rise then um uh, dollar you know gets stronger here um but in this case it's more of a the negativity that you know from the market that's driving so it's not that the dollar is very weak here it's the stronger much stronger yen and uh, we'll see across the other you know in uh, major pairs here with, with a major counterpart it against its major counterparts but i'll get to that in a bit so at this point look at this is I, this idea is working out i talked about this 144 territory yesterday I said to you that if we fall below it i'll consider a larger correction here to the downside uh maybe even towards that 143 zone right now but again let's wait and see um for now yes i'm gonna aim for that as long as we stay below the 144 territory um jumping into usdchf uh, this one here i honestly i'm just gonna say the same thing i've talked about it already it's in the range i'm just i'm waiting until we're gonna clear out some of the you know one of these areas either the 0 0.90 territory or the 0 0.8907 uh, area approximately around here uh, and then, yeah, I'll do something about it. USD CAD. Uh, USD CAD is doing something better here. And this is what I talked about. Look, I kept on mentioning this pair. And I said to you that if we do pop and stay above this 1.3270 territory, I will get more comfortable with the upside. But only up until here, up until this 50-day EMA. So you can watch my previous videos. I, I was mentioning this. And I said to you that um, I'm still kind of cautiously bullish. And... Uh, but I'll get more bullish if if we do push above this 1.3270 territory, but bullish only up until the 50-day EMA. If we clear the 50-day EMA, that's fine. I'll go higher. I'll go. I have somewhere to go. I have the uh, the 200-day EMA, or the, you know, together with which coincides right now together with the 100-day EMA. Perfect target as well. But um, let's go slowly in this one. Today we have some data, U.S. economic data. Tomorrow we have also U.S. economic data, NFPs, by the way. And uh, we have the Canadian job numbers as well. So expect some nice movement here uh, on uh, USD CAD. So, you know, just be careful with this and, uh, you know, risk only what you can afford to lose. And, um, and in general, I strongly recommend to wait um, for the news to come out and then do some, maybe do something about it. Uh, GBP, JPY, uh, looking at the picture here, um, also beautiful hold up this 183.77 territory. I spoke about this zone and I kept on mentioning it uh, this whole week. And there we go. Uh, we got a hold up. We failed again to stay above it and we're drifting back to the downside. So, however, I said to you before as well that I will get more comfortable with the downside if we do fall below the 182.3. 13 somewhere around here this area 
if we do fall and stay below it, then yes, I'll aim for a larger correction to the upside because don't forget to the downside because don't forget that we are still above this upside support line taken from the low of the 24th of March. So any move, any throwback towards that line could be classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of buying. So keep that in mind. Uh, GBP USD. Um, looking at the picture here, um, yes, uh, somewhat positive. It seems somewhat positive, but um, as as you can see, the 1.2727 territory that I spoke about previously, um, it's still providing good resistance. So in a way, uh, I need to see a clearance of that in order to go higher. At the moment, I'm not really getting that. So hey, um, let's put it this way. Uh, for now, I'll wait. Uh, for now, I will just observe the price action again, and I'll keep an eye, a very, very close eye on the US dollar. Because if that one weakens, uh, then yes, we could see a pop here in GBPUSD. But then my next target is the 1.2760. And if that gets cleared, then yes, this is where I'm going to aim for the highest point of June near the 1.2848 level. Uh, for the downside in the short run, uh, let me just jump into a four hour chart. So, what you can do here is maybe stick to this little territory, the 1.2666 zone. If we, I talked about this level, by the way, previously. So if we do fall below it, I'll consider, yes, a correction here to the downside. Now then, um, jumping into GBP CAD. Uh, GBP CAD, oh, I haven't talked about this one for quite a while. Also something interesting to keep in mind. Um, look, in terms of uh, economic data from um uk mm, that that there's we we get the construction pmi numbers today from the uk um yesterday we had the services and composite pmis those uh but yeah that's kind of it so we, not much data from the uk just the pmis which are fine as well but um today for example yes only the construction pmi is coming out but look um from Canada, we today, by the way, by the way, I forgot to say that today from Canada, we have the IV PMIs. So that's going to be interesting. And maybe it could have its effect on GBP CAD here as well. So, you know, where the Canadian dollar would be the driver and uh, the main driver. So, look, I have this level here, the 1.6917. But at the same time, I also have this territory, the... Uh, the highest point of June, near the 1.6979 level. If that gets cleared, then yes, I will get more comfortable with the upside and I'll aim for the highest point of this year, the current highest point of this year, near the 1.7148. Um, if um, we do start falling below the 50-day EMA, I will uh, start considering a move towards the 100-day EMA or maybe even a little bit below that. So, um, long story short, um, that's another interesting target that I'm going to be aiming for, to be honest. This 1.67 territory, a very good area of support. If that gets cleared, guess what? Potentially more sellers could join in. Uh, Euro JPY, another yen pair. And look at this. I talked about this yesterday in my morning video. I said to you that we broke the upside line. In a way, that could lead to some lower levels. And... Uh, uh, and uh, as I said to you, that if as long as we stay below this upside line, I will lean a little bit more towards the downside, towards my 23.6% retracement on the Fibonacci, which we've tested perfectly. Uh, we tested it perfectly, and uh, we just got a hold up here, rebounded. Now, what's next? Well, this is what's next. I will stick to these levels, and if we do fall below the 23.6, my next target is the 38.2, which is approximately around the 154.45 level. And then if that gets cleared, yes, so on and so on, I will go a little bit lower. For the upside, I will take a conservative approach and wait for a push of the 158 territory in order to get comfortable with higher levels. Simple as that. All this area right here is a neutral one for me. I'm just observing the price action because, again, if you manage to capture this, congratulations. Um, Euro USD, um, this one, there we go. Beautiful move to the downside, to a break of this lower side of the descending triangle pattern. And uh, there we go, a, a beautiful push back up inside inside it. Uh, we initially, we violated the lower side of this, but uh, yeah, the bulls picked up again and uh, we're, uh, we moved nicely you know, higher. However, what I wanted to say is that, look, I talked about this idea uh, previously in my in, in, from Monday. I was saying to you that, look, if we do fall below this 1.0892 territory, 
um, then yes, I will consider a move lower towards this target. And there we go. We reached it. Initially, I was aiming for the 50-day EMA. And if that said, if that gets clear, then my next target is around here. We reached it. Fantastic. What's next? What's next is that um, at the moment, I am going to take a neutral stand. Because what I want to see here is if we do violate this hurdle again, then yes, I'll get comfortable with lower levels. But if we start pushing through the upper side of the uh, descending triangle pattern, which it considers to be uh, con is considered to be as a bearish indication, but if we push through the upper side of it, as we already seen in the in the recent past and some other instruments, uh, then yes, I will start aiming for the upside here. I don't know. I don't know exactly which level first. Maybe this one. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too high. Maybe this one right here. But look. Um, I will get to that point if we do see a push above this downside line. At this point, while we remain inside the pattern, I'm just observing the price action and not really doing anything. And I'm waiting because I think that um, the data that we're going to get today or tomorrow uh, might kind of move this pair. And uh, but again, the question in which direction? That's what that's the, the key. Uh, at this point, I will, I will, like I said, I'll stick to my uh, game plan and I'll just observe these uh, potential breakout areas. And then I'll, you know, consider the next short term directional move once we see a break um, of one of these sides. So guys, that's it for this session. I hope you found it useful and uh, really a massive, massive thank you very much uh, for attending this session, for watching this, watching this live, watching this in recorded, in recording. Um, so I really, really appreciate that, guys. So honestly, you don't know how much you're helping me in general and uh, helping me to continue with these uh, sessions. So I really appreciate your support. Uh, I really appreciate your comments, whatever. Just good morning. You know, how are you? It's still good. And I really appreciate your rockets in there as well. So we thank you very much for that, guys. So uh, join me tomorrow, uh, as always, 6 o'clock GMT time. For now, have a beautiful trading day. Stay safe. Have your stop losses in place. Risk only what you can afford to lose. And everything will be fine. Thank you very much. And bye-bye. Hey there, thank you very much for watching this one till the end, I really appreciate that. So, like this video? We speculate your next mouse movement will be towards the subscribe button.